So it's story time. I haven't been to the store in a while, like weeks. And Mr. Soap and Clay had to go to Target for something. And I asked him to pick up some new shirts for me to do filming in because, you know, it's the springtime and I don't have my new work, whatever. I thought he was gonna pick me up some cute shirts that said something about wine or yoga or, you know, whatever. And he got me this. Instant lunch. Hi, Mrs. Open Clay. Let's make stuff. Sudsers, welcome back to the channel. You are here for 365 days of soap, and today we're making a mechanic soap. Now, this is a spin on the gardener soap that I that I made previously, and this one has even more of the the rough, ragged, you know, exfoliating bits in it, which sounds terrible, but it's actually awesome, um, especially for you know mechanics or people who otherwise are always working with their hands and getting super dirty. I tell Mr. Soap and Clay that he oozes grease from his pores, and I actually think that's true. Whenever he's home and not, you know, working his real job, he's always tinkering around with, you know, a tractor or cars. You should see the car projects he has going on right now. As a result, his hands get super caked and all the grease and the grime and all the stuff that comes along with, you know, working on vehicles. And that's what this mechanic soap accomplishes. Now, pumice powder and pumice sand tend to inhibit lather, so we really wanna make sure that we get a nice bubbly oil in there to make sure that you're not spending too terribly much time scrubbing your hands. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. Let's go. So this video is actually short, sweet, and to the point because there's not much of a difference from this to my gardener soap that we have covered earlier. Now, this mechanic soap, this is a basic three blend of oils. So we're looking at coconut oil, olive oil, and palm. I also added uh, castor oil as well as cocoa butter to the mix to make it a really good sustainable lather as well as uh, add a little bit of creaminess and moisture to the lather. Now what I'm doing here is I am putting in oh I would say two three tablespoons of pumice powder as well as my kaolin clay and then I'm also going to add pumice sand to this batch. So so far it's looking pretty close to the gardener soap with the exception of the pumice sand right? Now, with the mechanic soap, I actually did decide to incorporate the sugar into the lye instead of pouring it directly into the soap batter as I did with the gardener's soap. Now, the benefit of incorporating the sugar into the lye water is that you are more certain that it's going to fully dissolve, which is, you know, great. And we will be working with that beautiful blue mica today. Now, normally this particular bar this is actually called the whetstone in my line and it's almost never in stock but i am going to color it a different color today just because i have never used this particular mica 100 percent on its own and i would like to see what it does on its own and see if it's worth it to you know switch over my blue now that is me mixing in the pumice powder so i said earlier we're looking at two to three tablespoons of that plus an additional two to three tablespoons of the pumice sand. So a fair amount of exfoliation is going into this. Now Mr. Soap and Clay loves this bar because it's really effective at cutting away the grease really, really quickly and easily. It does not overly dry his hands and it will not injure any of the nicks and cuts and everything that he's got in his hands while he's been working, which is, you know, a super bonus. Now, 
again, we are removing a portion of the oils, the base oils from the batch to disperse the pumice powder and pumice sand in to make it easier to incorporate into the soap when it becomes soap batter. Now that's very important because pumice and pumice sand both, they're kind of difficult to incorporate into a soap batter pumice powder because it's very, very fine, and pumice sand because it's very, very heavy. So if you go ahead and disperse it into your liquid oils and then wait to put it into your soap batter until after the soap batter has reached emulsification, you're going to have much better results and ensure that the pumice sand and the pumice powder both are equally distributed amongst all bars as opposed to, you know, just settling down to the bottom. Now at this point, we are ready to put the lye water in. It is cooled down to room temperature. With the sugar in it, it did not scorch, didn't do anything like that, so that's super good because sometimes sugars can scorch with the lye water. And we are going to stick blend this for you know a while. It really doesn't matter hitting just emulsification and nothing else. In this case, actually, because it is a single color soap, you are probably going to want to get it reasonably thick because you know you you can. And with this particular batch, it's actually pretty slow to trace. So and that's because I actually have a fair amount of liquid oils in this guy to help out with the moisturizing content as well as you know the caster and everything in it to help out with the sustainable lather. Because mechanics tend to wash their hands a whole lot longer than normal than what you would expect after being out, you know, working on the cars or working on the you know the tractors and the trailers and all the things. Mr. Soap and Clay literally has all of the things. So at any given time. His hands are just covered in grease. I, I tease him and say that his hands actually seep grease because he's always working on something, which is weird because that's not even you know his like job. It's just a hobby that he really enjoys. And so any time that he has you know time off, he's definitely always tinkering around with something, and it's it's pretty awesome. So this soap definitely helps his hands get you know nice and clean and they still stay moisturized and he's not dealing with any sort of you know again irritation from any abrasions or anything that he may have you know got while he was out working on his you know, toys which is you know a slam dunk all around he loves this he used to be completely obsessed with like the goji or even like the old school lava soaps but they always dried his hands and so he would follow up with this really thick almost like aquifer type um, ointment on his hands afterwards and that's just you know not cool it's kind of gross and you should your hands should never feel like that so I designed this bar specifically with him in mind and ever since I did you know he hasn't looked back he loves this his goji has been gone for several years his lava has been gone for several years and this is the thing he most often requests now that we are sitting at a nice thin trace for this it is time to incorporate the pumice powder the pumice sand the extra oils that we had reserved from before, as well as the essential oils, so the smellums and the kaolin clay. Now, this is, again, it's such a super simple bar to make. There's no complicated swirls or anything going on with this, which is, you know, one of those those bars where, you know, I say soap is 70% prep work, 20% cleanup, and 10% soap. This one is super true. It's almost like 98% prep work and, you know, 2% soap. But I guess, you know, the other cleanup has to be in there too. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, mix in the kaolin clay and the smellums here. For this particular bar, we have a blood orange mixed with a blend that I make for my bond bar. So the, the for your skin only bar, my, my OG Sudsers totally know this bar. They love this bar. I call it my sexy man scent. And I think, you know, a mechanic soap should definitely have a super sexy man scent. And it's it's very complex. It's got cedar and sandalwood and eucalyptus, patchouli, and some juniper. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's got a lot of things in it. And it's just like the epitome of what you think when you, you know, think sexy man. That's what it smells like. Plus some extra orange because the goji and yeah, whatever. And anyway, now we are all mixed up. It is ready to be poured into the molds and then, you know, see popped and cured overnight. So at this point, that's what we're gonna do. Honestly, the hardest part of this bar really is formulating the recipe. So you have to think about, do you want the water discount or not? Do you want, 
a super fat or not. What kind of oils are you going to use to ensure that the bar doesn't disintegrate too quickly? Because again, men mechanics, they are washing their hands a whole lot more than like the normal person in you know, the 30 seconds at the sink doing your hand washing. So you do want to keep those things in mind when actually formulating the recipe. But other than that, it's a very, very simple bar. And we are just going to pour these into individual, you know, molds at this point. I, you can pour it into whatever you want, honestly. The only reason that I use these for this bar is because, again, this bar is named the Whetstone in my line, and so it sort of looks like a Whetstone when it's not bright blue. And also, I got these molds for a custom order for a bridal shower once, and I like to feel like I'm using the molds for more than, you know, just one pour. These particular molds work really well for a mechanic soap because they weigh out at about five ounces a piece and they have a good heft to them in, in the hand. So that's that's awesome, you know, it's a good weight. And other than that, you know, it's it, it's it's a thing. You can you can do whatever you want. You can pour it into, you know, regular slab molds or log molds and cut them however you'd like it. It really doesn't matter. This particular recipe does need to be resized though because it's going to make nine bars. And I don't like making, I mean, for the most part, I don't make small batches anyway. I don't make anything under, you know, like 36 bars at a time. I'm obviously doing that for the YouTube channel because, you know, it's easier to film 12 bars at a time. But this guy didn't even get, you know, a full dozen. And that is crappy. So it does need to be resized. Do pay attention to the sizing of your molds and how you need to resize your batch when you are making something like this. So you don't annoyingly get stuck with you know, nine, nine bars. That's, that's weird. But at this stage, now that everything is in the mold and you know, it went in reasonably well. So we just need to give it a couple bangs to release any potential air bubbles. I don't think we have any problems with this one though. We are going to put it into the oven and see pop it overnight. Not at all necessary for this, but again, this is also a color test for me. So I want to see what that blue does after it's been gelled. You know, and heated overnight. So that's what we're doing next and tomorrow will be the reveal. So this is obviously not a cut, right? Because it was poured into a silicone mold. So it's easy enough just to pop it out and you know show you the finished product. And this bar, it cures up really, really quickly. The uh, coconut oil, the palm oil, as well as the cocoa butter really makes for a very firm bar very quickly. Now, you see where we have the sort of ashiness on the top of the bars there on the right hand side. That actually didn't go through gel. And the colors are crap, which tell me that it didn't go through gel, you know, at all. And so I'm gonna need to actually check my oven and see what happened with that. I, Mr. Soap and Clay built me a custom oven to do, you know, C-pop and you know jelling my soaps in and it's actually possible that I forgot to, to turn it on before I put it in because I am a disaster with almost everything that I do but you know anyway those bars look at them they look great they're nice and firm they will be they will stop losing water weight within the next three to four days and at this point because I mean theoretically they went through CPOP they are, they no longer have any residual lye left over in, in them. So, you know, legitimately a lye free bar, but obviously I need the pH test. That is a different video for a different time, obviously with the pH testing, but you know, so, you know, there you have it. It's day 18 of 365 days of soap. This is the mechanic soap it has pumice powder. Pumice sand is pretty, pretty epic and will work to successfully scrub off all of the greasy, nasty, gross, bits that you find on yourself after doing hard, you know, hand work, really. Now, when these bars aren't blue, they're called the whetstone in my line, and I haven't made them for a while. I've kind of been busy making the other things, and so they've been pushed down the list. But since Mr. Soap and Clay requested one, they're back in stock, and they're on the website, so you can go ahead and go to soapandclay.com and grab one of them. They're really great. They're really big bars of soap, and then all the exfoliating bits in there, it's sort of like a combination between like the goji and the old lava soaps but with extra moisture. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a win all around. When I brought Mr. Soap and Clay's home, now he'd been working in the garage all day on a car and had already washed his hands, but I made him test it because, you know, he tests the things and does the things. 
And he was actually surprised that there was still residual grease left on his hands that he didn't notice that this bar, you know, got off effectively. But for me, that makes it a winning bar. Thank you so much for joining us again today on 365 Days of Soap. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. If you want to find me on social media, you sure can. Handle Soap and Clay with the exception of Facebook, which is I don't even use soap. Please subscribe to the channel. If you've been here before, you're probably going to watch a couple other videos. So, you know, just subscribe and, you know, help me out. That'd be awesome. And yeah, thanks so much for, for hanging out with me today and I will see you guys tomorrow.